Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 4-29-2022, and today is the Odin Project Day Vlog Day 100. We have reached triple digits. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, enough silliness. So, um, today, I last couple days anyway, I was able to get through Section 3, um, this is a lot like section two, um, trying to not overthink it. So the problem with me is, and you, I kind of showcased this in my last video for number two, is that uh, I'm so used to just barreling through the code, getting things done, you know, having functions do probably more than they should be doing, and trying to get into a better habit of having one function do one thing or or maybe two things, but in this exercise particularly, they only want you doing modules uh, that do one one function, one task. So um, with that said, I had to do a little bit of backpedaling because I found myself trying to do too many things in one block of code. So I basically simplified it a little bit and stopped, and I'll, you'll see this in the code, and I'll explain explain through it uh, what I mean by that but uh, step three is uh, set up your HTML and write your write a JavaScript function that will render the contents of the game board array to the web page for now you can just manually fill in the array with X's and O's so here is how I started that so we'll first start off, start off with the HTML and so this is the block of code I added not too much, so I added a H1 uh, uh, element uh, and called tic tac toe at the top and inside the body, and then I have a div container called div class container, and then inside of uh, uh, the div class container, I have nine. <coughs> excuse me, I have nine uh, divs uh, in, uh, with two classes each: grid box and grid box. Uh, zero through eight, and that represents the index array of the of this is uh, ends up being a node list, and I'll explain that in the JavaScript code. But um, uh, these are the individual. Uh, the grid box is just the individual box that you're either going to check for X or O is what you'll click. Um, so I didn't want to do DOM manipulation on this particular part. It said to write out HTML, so I'm assuming they wanted you to write your, you know, build out your physical structure of your game in the HTML and so that's basically what this is and and the whole reason why I have uh, two classes is I have a class that targets grid box uh, itself so that every class gets the same um, styling essentially in the CSS and then I, my idea which I may go back and erase but as of right now at this present moment I'm gonna keep it is I might use a secondary class with the index properties uh, here um, to target specific boxes when clicked down the road when we add event listeners for clicks. Um, I may do that. I may not. I may erase it. I may go with a data attribute like we did, like I did in um, um, in the um, uh, library app, the previous, um, uh, sorry, long day, I guess, <laughs> brain's burnt. Uh, the previous project we just completed, um, but uh, I don't know. Or I may do something completely different than that. But anyway, that was my thought with uh, having the secondary class. So the secondary class is not hooked up to anything right now. It's not doing anything really. I'll show you in JavaScript here. Um, so let's get started with that, and then we'll end up in the uh, we'll end it with going to the browser and checking out the CSS and seeing what it looks like on the page. So. Um, all this stuff's the same. I haven't changed anything. All I did was I added this right here. Um, I added um, a comment of set, setting up the render module for array display to game board. <clears throat> and so in my pseudocode, I wrote out uh, render array to the screen method to screen me module. Excuse me. Render array to screen module is an object. So that's what I did here. Is I created a um, a module as I originally had this as a factory but I changed it because um, it's really only doing one thing and the reason why I had it as a factory is because my thought was well this render 
is going to be called every time in my thoughts here as I'm logically thinking through it. It's not on code yet, but down the road in future uh, videos here, we're going to be wiring up some click cook events and stuff. And I was like, well, this render is going to be called multiple times, so it should be a factory. But I think I was looking at it the wrong way. I think factory is more like do a factory function if you're going to do like player like you're trying to get not only multiple players created but you're also returning multiple at, um, properties uh, and variables from that cl from that um, that create player or that function that you're doing versus that's not what we're really needing here what we're really needing is render array or well, yes it will be ran or could be ran a lot but it's only being ran once and it's only doing one thing and that's kind of what I had to go back to and that's what I talked about earlier about uh, not having it do too much so let's just get started so I have the uh, declared as render array to screen module equals uh, there's your local anonymous function and it runs all this code in here no return nothing in return right now there might be I just put it in there as a place marker and then um, I'm gonna go through why I have this and why this works now but why it doesn't <laughs> it isn't gonna work, work long term um, because up here we have uh, I declared the game board array and put an X inside because if you remember in the uh, instructions here it says just manually fill in the array with X's and O's right now so in order to mock that up I threw an X in there but um, so the way I have this structured right here is I have I create a constant variable called grid box as it takes on document dot query selector all grid box so what that does is it creates a node list of all grid boxes which is if you remember the um, the grid boxes are all these divs here so it's gonna make a node array of all of those and uh, so your grid boxes is a node list of basically divs so you have to tell it where to um, you have to tell it where to it's basically like an array it's a node array well sorry I had to tick there <clears throat> Tourette's is active uh, grid box is a node list of elements but it acts like an array it's not exactly an array but it acts like an array so you have to give it a position so an, an index so I gave it an index of zero dot text content we've seen this part before and then this receive it receives the contents of game board module which is up here dot game board and so I did I did end up making game board a returnable um, object so um, it's a string uh, because I got double quotes in there so it's seeing it as a string so this uh, contents of this is a string um, will be entered into the text content which works good because it's uh, also by default text content on any um, any element is a string so um, it's just gonna print off whatever's in here so that's what that's doing and I just have two console logs for diagnostic purposes first one says says show me the array as seen inside of the uh, render array to screen module and I just have it printing out that same that same uh, attribute um, and variable and then I have a second console log. Show me the node list of the grid boxes as seen inside of ren render array to screen module and then grid boxes. So if you just call out grid boxes, it will give you a full node list of all of the uh, current grid boxes that it, see that it has, that it sees. So that's essentially what that does. And again, return is blank right here because there's nothing to return. It's just, and then since it's a... <clears throat> A module function it, it invokes immediately so as soon as I call render array to screen module it's gonna it's gonna run that code and that's what I'm doing down here so I had that line of code which is weird because I'm used to doing you know like this and uh, <laughs> uh, making it a function but that's it's not a function so I doubt that'll work but um, so it's kind of weird to see just running I, I may look at that um, uh, at another time to see if I'm doing that wrong um, but it does work like this you can let me know in the comments if uh, if that's not appropriate to do like that um, again this is all work in progress all subject to change anyway so um, anyway so why I say this may not work is because right here 
I have a re I have a to do as a reminder. It says refactor this. Don't need to query select a grid box. Target from click will take care of that once I have the click event module set up. So basically, that's a long-winded way of saying once I have a module that takes care of the click event for the box that it's going into, I no longer need um, I no longer need uh, this right here. I don't need to query selector all grid boxes because and I, so I won't need this array. I'll still need the text content. I'll still need this portion of it, but I'm I'm thinking I'll be able to instead of using grid boxes as a node list, I'll be able to use um, uh, the you know I'll be able to carry over the click event properties and make make it public so that this this uh, function will be able to see those uh, that property of that click event. So so basically, I'm using the ID target of the click event to do the heavy lifting so I don't have to go query select to figure out which grid box it click they clicked so this that's why this sits it like this for now and it's subject it will change because this isn't right this only works because I we're manually hand jamming in uh, something in the game board in in uh, the you know the array to give it something to chew on so that's basically it so where everything else is the same so let's go ahead and take a look at this in the browser. So if you uh, run it, um, this is what it does a a as I just showed you. So it says show me the array is seen inside of render array to screen module. So it's showing me array. So there's my array uh, string of x it is a array index 0, just one length, one item. And then I have show me the node list of the grid boxes seen inside of render to array render array to screen module and so here it's showing me every single um, 0 through 8 um, div for the um, indexes for each grid box class um, again it's a node list it, it, it's not an array I keep having, to, keep having to tell myself that it looks and behaves like an array but it's not an array so not all properties will be exposed can, that and methods and properties can be exposed to be used here because it's not acting as such. But I, I can key off uh, key off the index as as like an array because as you notice x is currently in zero, and that's because in the um, code right here we I have I have told it to target the zero position the zero index with the game and then. Um, with game board and game board is X and so that's how that works so if I were to change this to O you'll just see here it'll dynamically update oops <laughs> save that and there you go now it's O um, I can move it to I can even change it from even works with a integer so if I I wouldn't do there's no reason to do this but if I put the number one in there it will flow through correctly and print number one and you'll see here when I hover over, you'll see it doing that um, game board, game property. See, it says number there, uh, game board number. Uh, if I change this back to a string and save it, that hover over, it will change back to string. So it's seeing that, so that's good. That's wired up correctly. So the objective of that wiring up and getting the uh, module to work is, has been successfully done. Um, and then the CSS part of it is, so I have a, uh, the body here is a grid and, um, there's no grid to it itself. The only reason why I made it a grid is so I could get it to, so I could use align, align items and justify content. Cause as you know, without, without grid, you can't use those. Um, those aren't exposed and available to you. So that's why it's a grid. So there's no templates. Uh, there's no template column or rows to, to find here. Um, background color is black, as you can tell. And I zeroed out the margin, margin padding. H1 um, just has a color white text align center. And then here's the container. Um, it's also a grid. As you can see, um, it doesn't really matter if I turn the grid on because I, I made the border blue so you could see it anyway but if I turn the grid on you'll see it dashes behind there to show that grid so that grid is there um, I'll just turn that off 
Um, so display grid. It's got a grid template columns of three, uh, one FR, one FR, one FR. I could have done repeat, you know, one FR, but uh, three one FR, but I decided not to. This was just uh, easy, just as easy. Uh, row is also one FR, one FR, one FR. So that gives you a three by three um, cube. Text align is center. Um, that aligns everything again to the center of the page. The height and width are 400. Um, just just because it was an even number, um, it looked good. The boxes are big enough to to click on and, and viewable at any uh, any any uh, um, age of eyes, <laughs> shall we say? Background color is gray. I thought that contrasted nicely against the black. Um, there's no reason why I chose black. Um, I just did just to be different, just because uh, I wanted the just have some different project here with a different color than using pastel type colors like I have been using. So if you notice in the first grid box here, it's X is in there because uh, that was our DOM manipulation at work here in the JavaScript's code. So if I change this to O, that'll update here is O. Then I can also, which I haven't showcased, but shouldn't be any surprise I can change the index here of the node list to say 5 save that and X will go to slot 5 so it's 0 1 2 3 4 or 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that's how that works um, so that's that's how that that's how that's set up for now again it's it's a work in progress I'm trying not to get ahead of things because I I quickly was going into an array in here, or a, I was l starting to iterate through a, a grid box with a four each, and I stopped and had to go back because I was like, you know, what are we doing here? Um, because I'm not going to be doing that with production anyway when it's done, because I know I'm be, you know, doing click events, so there's no need to loop through. So that was just an example of um, just if you're tempted to keep rolling with it because you're in the zone, just try to try to stick with what they're asking you to do and try not to do more because I think if if you do too much you'll then when you get to like you know four or five or six you'll end up doing more work because you'll have to undo the work you already did because it may not be you know suitable for the rest of the project so finding myself having to do that a bit and then don't be afraid to write yourself a to do like I did here um, it's a great way to remind yourself to fix something um, when you come back to it later. Um, with that said, um, this will be my probably my last video. I'm leaving, I know I've said this several times now, but leaving on vacation, um, going across the country for a week, have a nice vacation with my family. Uh, leaving Sunday, um, this is Friday night, so I probably won't be doing any more uploads at this point. This will be where I'll stop. It's a good place to stop. And I'll be gone till the 9th or 10th of May and then coming back and then getting back in the saddle with things and starting to upload again. So um, I think that's it. Make sure you guys uh, upload, uh, uh, push your commits to your Git, uh, to GitHub, and uh, so that you can keep up to date, um, keep your project uh, versioning set. And um, that's about it. So with all that said, Please uh, like, share, and subscribe for more content, and let me know in the comments section how you guys are coming along with the project so far. So, again, like I just said three times, <laughs> with all that said, till next time, see you on the other side. Later.